In this video presentation, we will discuss about the Ebola and Marburg viral disease. This is a deadly emerging zoonotic viral disease, commonly affects humans and non-human primates. These deadly zoonotic viral diseases has an occasional outbreaks that occur primarily in the African continent. Outbreaks have been recorded at various countries in the Central Africa, West Africa, and in East Africa. The first well-known outbreak was in 1967 at a place named Marburg in Germany. Here, the Marburg virus outbreak was first occurred in the research laboratory in Marburg, Germany. The first people infected had been exposed to the virus by conducting research on African green monkeys and their tissues. These monkeys have been imported from Africa for research purpose. 31 people became ill. Initially laboratory workers, followed by several medical personnel and their family members who had cared for them, became ill. In this incident, seven deaths were reported. This is the first well-known outbreak incident documented. Classification. Filovirde family, classified under the Baltimore Group 5. And with the order mononegaviral. These are the genus under this family. The Zaire Ebola virus, and the other species like, Sudan, Bundi Bugyo, Reston, and Thai forest virus, under the genus Ebola virus. And the Marburg Marburg virus, under the genus Marburg virus. Ebola virus disease. The other name for this viral infection is, Ebola hemorrhagic fever. The first Ebola virus outbreak was reported in Zaire, at Congo, in 1976, and the causative agent was named after the nearby Ebola River. Till date, many Ebola outbreaks have been recorded. But in 2013 15, a massive Ebola outbreak was occurred in West Africa. In this outbreak, 40% human death rate, that is, fatality rate, have been documented. This disease is caused by the genus. Ebola virus, of the family, Filoviridae. This is an emerging zoonotic viral disease, characterized by fatal hemorrhagic fever, affecting, humans, and non-human primates. The susceptible hosts for this virus are, macaques, chimpanzees, gorillas, African green monkeys, baboons, and humans. This virus also infects, pigs, and duikers. Duikers are, small-sized antelope present in African countries. The results of research studies and field surveys in Africa strongly suggest that, fruit bats, are the natural reservoirs, for Ebola and Marburg viruses. In fact, these bats carry this virus, without showing clinical signs. So, the bats are the, natural reservoirs for, Ebola and Marburg viruses. These viruses appear sporadically, and producing high mortality, in non-human primates. Humans may get infection, through contact with these infected non-human primates, or from the infected bats. But, human-to-human -human transmission is the, predominant cause for the epidemic among human population. As per WHO, pathogens are classified based on their risk to humans, namely risk group 1, risk group 2, risk group 3 and risk group 4 pathogens. In Ebola and Marburg case, the virus causes serious infection in human, and the treatment is also not promisingly helpful. So, they are grouped under, Risk Group 4 Pathogen These are the four biosafety containment level for handling different types of pathogens. So, this type of Risk Group 4 pathogens, which are extremely dangerous must be handled only in, Biosafety Containment Level 4 Laboratory Facility, which is a highest level of Biosafety Containment Lab. Biosafety Level 4, BSL-4 Laboratory Facility. This is a highest level of Biosafety Containment Lab. The picture shown here is the, Biosafety Level 4 Lab. In BSL-4 Lab, Class 3 Biosafety Cabinet is used. This is also called, Glove Boxes, due to work being conducted using, Arm Length Gloves. This gas tight cabinet provides, a barrier between, the specimen being examined, and the worker examining it. This cabinet is designed, to work best with, Risk Group 4 Pathogens. The laboratory workers in this lab, must wear, Positive Pressure Suit. It is sophisticated personal protective equipment. Here, fresh, filtered air is supplied to the interior of suit, through tube. So this positive pressurization offers the air, which is forced out, instead of being sucked in. This positive pressure suit, has to be inspected, for defect and puncture, before use. These facilities is featured with, airlock entry, and airlock doors, between rooms. These facilities also featured with effluent decontamination system, 
which is a special waste disposal management system followed in BSL-4 lab. Some of the BSL-3+, plus, or 4 laboratories in India, for handling these types of high-risk pathogens are High Security Animal Disease Laboratory, ran by IVRI, at Bhopal. Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, at Hyderabad. Microbial Containment Complex, ran by National Institute of Virology, at Pune. BSL-3 Plus means, BSL-3 Lab, with some facilities of BSL-4. Other Risk Group 4 Pathogens, apart from Marburg, Ebola Virus are. Lassa Virus. Crimean Congo Hemorrhagic Fever Virus. Hendra Virus. Nipah Virus. And some Flavi Viruses. Marburg Virus Disease. The other name for this viral infection is. Marburg Hemorrhagic Fever. This disease is caused by the genus, Marburg Virus. This is also an emerging zoonotic viral disease, characterized by fatal hemorrhagic fever, affecting, humans, and non-human primates. Except the causative agent, this infection is clinically indistinguishable from the Ebola viral disease. These are some of the recent Marburg outbreaks listed. Highest human death due to Marburg virus was documented in, 2004, 5 outbreak at Angola, Africa. Virus morphology. The filovirus is extended and filamentous, with 970 nanometer length. This virus possesses helical capsid, and also covered with lipid envelope all around, and with the matrix protein below. This lipid envelope is studded with an important protein named, glycoprotein. This protein is the immunodominant protein, which play a major role in the antigenicity, that is virus neutralizing antigen. For Ebola virus prevention, recombinant vaccine, with these glycoproteins is engineered, and vaccine has been launched recently and in use in African countries. Picture shown here is the electron microscope image of a filovirus, which has extended, and filamentous virus morphology. Genomic organization. The genome is single-stranded, negative sense, linear RNA. The genome length is 19 kilo base pair length. This encodes for seven proteins. Transmission. The blood, infected tissues, and the body fluids like, urine, saliva, sweat, feces, vomit, breast milk, and the semen from the infected human, or apes, act as the principal source of this virus. This virus is having the portal of entry through, broken skin or mucous membranes, and through sexual contact. The incubation is on range of 2 to 21 days from the entry of virus. Incubation depends upon the immune status of the individual. Risk groups for this infection are Healthcare professionals like doctors, nurse, and other workers, family and friends in close contact with Ebola patients, and travelers visiting the endemic areas. Pathogenesis. Following entry of virus through mucous membranes or through skin breaks, the virus does its initial replication in the endothelial cells, liver cells, immune cells like monocytes, macrophages, dendritic cells. Followed by viremia. And their next replication is at the lymph nodes. Following secondary replication, the virus gets distributed through the secondary viremia, with subsequent viral shedding through body fluids. This virus specifically damages the endothelial cells, liver cells, and immune cells. Which leads to, blood vessel injury improper clotting, and decrease in WBC concentration respectively. This causes internal and external bleeding, and weak immune response in the infected individual. Since there is a blood loss, blood transfusion is necessary. Clinical manifestations. Symptoms appears to be similar to common flu, malaria, and typhoid fever. The symptoms like, elevated body temperature, aches and pains like, headache, muscle aches, joint aches, chest pain, and stomach pain. Gastrointestinal symptoms like, diarrhea, and vomition with blood. And internal, external bleeding. Since there is a blood loss, blood transfusion is necessary. And rapid death after a mean of 3 days. Recovery of the person, completely depends upon, good supportive clinical care, and the patient's immune response. Diagnosis can be done in field level or in the laboratories. Field diagnosis. Based on the clinical symptoms. Signs and symptoms are often misdiagnosed for other infections, like common flu, malaria, and typhoid fever. Next, laboratory diagnosis. For lab diagnosis, blood samples are collected and confirmed for virus by reverse transcript as PCR. Prevention and control. For Ebola virus prevention, recombinant vesicular stomatitis virus, which is engineered with Zaire Ebola virus glycoprotein vaccine, has been launched recently. 
the vaccine was approved for medical use in Africa from 2018. As of 2019, more than 1 lakh people have been vaccinated against Ebola. Only in adult, this vaccine is used. This vaccine is prepared by genetically engineering the vesicular stomatitis viral genome to express glycoprotein obtained from the Zaire Ebola virus. So this provokes the neutralizing immune response to the Ebola virus. So on expression, it produces a vesicular stomatitis virus, which has been genetically engineered to express glycoprotein from the Zaire Ebola virus. So this provokes the neutralizing immune response to the Ebola virus. This vaccine is a recombinant, replication-competent vaccine. Treatment No antiviral drug is available against this virus. Early intensive supportive clinical care is necessary to reduce the risk of death. Here, the patients are treated symptomatically. Using intravenous fluids to overcome dehydration, oxygen therapy, blood transfusion to compensate the blood loss, and SAIDs to suppress fever, antidiarrheal, antiemetics, and antibiotics, to prevent bacterial infections is done. Recovery of the person completely depends upon early and good supportive clinical care and the patient's immune response. In case of death, dead bodies remain infectious. Thus, people handling human dead bodies remains in practices such as traditional burial rituals or more modern processes such as embalming are at risk. So, therefore, safe and deep burial practices are followed. Points to remember. Ebola and Marburg virus is filamentous virus morphologically. This virus causes fatal hemorrhagic fever in humans and in non-human primates. As per WHO, these pathogens are classified as risk group 4 pathogen, which are extremely dangerous. So, the suspected sample has to be handled only in biosafety level 4 labs. These viruses are zoonotic, and the body fluids from the infected human, or from non-human primates, act as the principal source of this virus. With this we are coming to the end of Ebola, and Marburg viral disease. In next video presentation we will discuss on the parvoviral enteritis in detail. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.